Yep. Nope. All right, I'm Greg McManus. I'm here to show you today how to lay out an eight foot uh, wall plate. Uh, the wall plate we're going to lay out today is, has a window on center, uh, so it is an eight foot wall plate. Uh, four feet on center uh, for our window, and I'll show you how to lay out all the studs, all the jack studs, all the king studs, and get you ready to frame in this wall. Uh, you would do the same thing for your top plate as you do for your bottom plate. Uh, that way they line up uh, perfectly. I've got uh, my little item here, a standard 2x4. Uh, everybody knows, and it's common knowledge, that the 4 inch side is actually 3.5 inches. The 2 inch side is actually inch and a half. So what you uh, are going to do today, we're going to use uh, 16 inch on center, uh, but we need to know this is an inch and a half, and I'll tell you why here in a minute. So first off, we know we're going to have a uh, stud on each end of the wall, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to mark out an inch and a half on this end, and I'm going to have an X here. The X notates where you want the stud to land, so that when I come through with my carpenter square, and I mark this line out they know what side of this line I want them to put the stud on that's not so much important on the end but as you go through you're going to mark every stud that way and it's going to make a big difference uh, if somebody else is going to install the studs or even you if you're doing a bunch of walls at the same time you want to uh, remember which side of that line you want the stud to be placed on so that notates our end stud there so what we're going to do is we're going to go through we're going to mark out where all the studs are going to be as mentioned before we're using 16 inch on center I've got my trusty tape measure here that has the 16 intervals marked on it you can see there 16 and 32 so this tape will tell me where my 16 inch studs need to be all the way through the 8 foot section so where this inch and a half comes in is we've actually got a divide that by two which gives us three quarters of an inch because when you mark your stud at sixteen inches you actually have to bring it back three quarters of an inch and I'll tell you why so when you line up your stud you want the middle of your stud to be on that sixteen inch line so knowing it's an inch and a half and we've subtracted three quarters of an inch here we're going to put our line here so that when you install the stud later it actually lands 16 on center so then what we'll do is we'll put an X on this side and I'll come through and I'll mark this line so what we'll do now is we'll run through we'll do the same 3 quarter inch deduction on each one of our 16 inch on center so we'll have a stud here we'll move down next one we'll have a stud here next one we'll have a stud here next one we'll have a stud here and then the next one we actually come to the next end one so we have to factor in the full inch and a half so on an eight foot wall this stud lands at uh, 94 and a half inches and we'll put an X on on this side here so then I'll run back through I'll put an X on the right side of each one so that I know where the stud needs to land to actually hit the 16 inch on center and this one and the end one I've already marked so now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to move my tape out of my way I'm going to take my carpenter square now this carpenter square here, a quick square this actually has a ledge so that it will rest right on the back side and you can just slide this back and forth that way you get a nice 90 degree angle where you need your stud to be and I'll run through and I'll mark all these studs out that way I've got the full line all the way across with the X's in place on the side where the stud needs to be so that you can move the carpenter square out of the way so that is basic studs oh I forgot one down here I'll just come through and make sure I mark that. So the next step we need to look at is the fact that there's the window. So as mentioned before, the window is centered on this wall. It's an eight foot wall. So our window center 
is going to be at the four foot mark. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a tick here and use the center line symbol so that I know that that's the center. That's the center where I need to look at because that's going to be the middle of the window once it's installed. So now the window we're going to install is 30 inches wide. So to make the rough set opening for a window you have to add an inch to the width. So a half an inch on each side. So 30 inch window we add that half an inch to each side we've got 15 and a half inches on either side so from the four foot mark I'm going to come back 15 and a half one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen and one half inches and then I'm going to come the other way the same one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen and one half inches so I've got lines marked now where the outside of my window opening is going to be. So what I'll do is I'll come along with this square again and put my lines in. And I'll put RSO and then I'll come back down here and do the same thing. Now this one here I've got two lines close together so I'm actually going to put a little arrow and put RSO. RSO, rough set opening. That way that tells me my window is going to go from that line to that line and I cannot have any studs in between. So here's what that means. That means under the window where this stud would have been, this stud now becomes a cripple. And the cripple goes underneath the window to support the window once it's in the opening. So with that being said, the other part of a window opening is of course the outside beams that hold the window in the open, that create the window open. So we've got our outer lines here and I know I need two things on the outside of this. I need a jack and what the jack does is it runs up the wall. It's not a full stud but it's most of a full stud and it holds the lintel above the window that takes the weight away from now the fact that we don't have full studs here. So, again, knowing that our inch and a half is the width of our actual stud, I've got to take this line and I've got to come back an inch and a half. So then at one and one half inches. And I'll make a line there. So this becomes now the slot for our jack. And from here, I'll come back another inch and a half. And this is now our king stud slot. That way I know I've got a jack here, I've got a king here, come back to the middle and I've got a cripple jack in the middle to support the window and then we'll come back down here. So I know this is our RSO opening here and on the outside I'm gonna have a jack. So I've got an inch and a half almost lined out here so I will do this here and this now becomes my jack same as the other side and then from this opening, I know I've got an inch and a half, so I'll mark another inch and a half here, and this will become where the king goes. So then, I will move my tape, I'll come back in with my square, and square these lines up all the way across, and then I'll go back to the other end, and I'll do it again. and I've got my jacks and my kings laid out and I'll tell you the beauty of this here is at any time you can now take your stud and you can put it in place and it'll tell you exactly how your studs are going to sit in all the slots down your wall just like that so then when you laid these out to actually build the wall you would have it clearly marked out where they all need to be and you would have no problem putting this wall together. Obviously there is cross braces that need to be installed between the jacks and the kings to finish off the wall frame but this is just showing you the, the top plate and the bottom plate. So there's one other thing that you need to consider when you're laying out your wall plate and that's the fact that eventually you are going to have to attach this to another wall. So that being said, if I have my end section laid out like this, as you can see, with my X, 
that shows that my stud sits here. When I butt another wall into it with an end plate on it, you get this situation. And this limits the amount of nailing space you have to secure the two walls together. So I'll tell you what else we do. You install an L stud. So your L stud is a stud that sits like this and would be installed just like that. That way, when you come along with your next wall and it comes time to fasten the two together, you've got a much greater space to attach the two walls, making for a more secure connection. So usually, I'll move these out of the way. On any wall that I want a uh, L stud to be installed, I come back with my tape measure. And I make a little spot on here showing that I want that installed. So that again, when they build the, the wall, it, it's incorporated into it. So I know I'm out an inch and a half here for my end stud. So from this section here where that stud ends, I know, as mentioned before, that the actual width of the 2x4 is not 4 inches, it's 3 and a half inches. So what I do is I take this and I go 1, 2, 3, and 1 half inches. So then I'll just make a rough line there where your 3 and a half inches would be. Then I come down and I mark an inch and a half this way. And then I'll show you. I take the square, mark again the trusty square, and I make a line going this way. You can see the line there. And then I tuck this on the end and I make another line showing that there so that I can write L stud. That way when the wall is built they know that they have to put an L stud in place and then I would go and I would do the same thing on the other end. That way I know everything for this wall is laid out on this all the information they need is laid out here and they can trust that this information is accurate and that if they built this wall to this style we would have no issues installed. That being said, that's the completed wall. You do that twice, once for the top, once for the bottom and you can just mark out your studs. When you go to install the window you just adjust your cripple jack to the height in which you want the window to be and then your lintel and the upper cripples that support the lintel uh, bring it down to again the rough set opening that you require for the height of your window and you would frame that in no problem. Follow the steps, you'll have no issue building your wall. Thank you. Thanks for watching.